Monastery, and we timed our arrival pretty well. Um, as we came in, they were blowing horns on the roof of the monastery. And eventually, a procession came along, and it took us a while to figure out what was going on, but the monks were being called. Um, into some sort of chanting and prayer ceremony. And then there was a um, more important looking monk, and that shows my uh, relative um, ignorance about what was going on, but he had a big yellow hat and was um, seeming to tell some sort of story. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how long we spent watching the monks chanting and praying. I sort of lost sense of time in there. After a while, we left the main room and then finally got to start exploring the actual monastery itself. It's a pretty big place, and the building itself, the main building, is pretty impressive. It's very palatial, and uh, I think I read in the book that it covers actually three different styles of architecture, going from Tibetan, Chinese, and even Indian. That comes from, apparently, when this all started, they brought in Chinese and Indian scholars, I guess, to help them interpret and uh, translate all the ancient Buddhist scripts. Some of the other stuff I noticed here, there's a lot more pilgrims than at the other monasteries that we've been at. Um, they're pretty interested in, in checking out the monastery and looking around at different things. Um, this would be a good example. Um, and it was just that it seemed a lot more of a homey monastery, and the monks here um, seem to have a lot more sense of humor than at other places. They're a lot more jocular and sort of wrestling in the courtyard before they go into chant. And even while chanting, you could see them sort of ridding each other until they really got into the ceremony. Also wandering around here, one thing that's really struck me is the statuary. I think they've got more impressive statues than the other places that we've been in. They're really very striking, especially the protector deities, which are always the scariest, angry-looking ones. And uh, they're really magnificent here. They're just even scarier and even angrier than the, than the usual. Um, also, since it's a big building, there's a lot of wall space and they've got a lot of murals. And they're just as beautiful here as any, uh, any we've seen anywhere else. And I guess over 1,200 years, you really get to build up quite an impressive collection. They're just as intricate and just as amazing to look at, sort of occasionally difficult to look at because it's such an incredibly different style and such an intricate painting that there's just too much to take in. One of the main statues that I saw here was Duro Rinpoche, whose name I might not be pronouncing correctly, but you can recognize him because he has a staff with three heads on it, or one is a skull, one's a shrunken head, and then one's a head. Um, I think he had a lot to do with the founding of this monastery. So I thought that was really interesting that I'm finally starting to recognize some of the protector deities and some of um, the people in the statues that we come across. So today we went to Samye Monastery, go through a desert, horns blowing, monks chanting, banging on the drums. Super surreal, really good stuff. Really enjoyed it, loved it. I'd go back, as long as they're having a ceremony. Good stuff. And then we went out to dinner. Then we went out for Tibetan dance. Some wacky kind of Tibetan dance. MTV meets ancient Tibet meets whatever karaoke. Crazy costume. The cowgirl thing, the cowgirl outfit. <laughs> I don't know exactly how. Red cowboy hats with a disco beat from the 80s really works in the Asian Tibetan 
tradition, but well, there it was. I'm not gonna argue with him. Uh, then we get to go up on stage with all the performers, get our pictures took. We're Nia Cats. Like the Yak Cats. Everybody's getting Yak Cats for Christmas. And then they, uh, the director invited us into another room to, uh, you know, oh, please, please come hang out. We'll sip some drinks and discuss, which turned out to be a gambe fest, just one, two, three, gambe, one, two, three, gambe, and they just kept coming at us. More gambe. Would have been okay if it wasn't Budweiser. Why do they have to be Budweiser's? Uh, and then just then on top of that all the singers the performers would just surround us and sing at us like from this close <laughs> beautiful beautiful singing but just totally totally surreal <laughs> just odd and every song had to finish with Gambe uh, but now we're back. I think I'm going to bed. We're going to Lhasa tomorrow. Finally. So far I've had a really excellent experience. I'm a little uh, weirded out just because I haven't gotten homesick at all yet. And it's very um, strange to be in a place in my life where you don't miss home. I don't really have a home that feels that way. So um, it's definitely an interesting experience to be far away and having a better experience and not missing really anyone or anything. Um, back where you came from.